I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Today, we're counting down our picks for the movies everyone loves to hate. Number 10, Super Mario Brothers. Name, Mario. Last name, Mario. This live action adaptation of the popular video game franchise was initially blasted for the liberties it took with the source material. The film's grungy setting, mature themes, and confusing lore upset moviegoers upon release. But the unique qualities that once inspired anger became appreciated over the years. Devoted viewers were able to bring back the film for multiple public screenings. And because some people couldn't get enough of the world, a few fans recut the movie with deleted scenes, and others illustrated and wrote a webcomic sequel. Number 9. Cats When the first trailers for the feline-themed musical were released, the CGI that brought the anthropomorphic cats to life alternated between looking horrifying and unfinished. Outside of the special effects, audiences unfamiliar with the story found the Jellicle plot extremely difficult to understand. Jellicle cats come out tonight! Jellicle cats come one, come all! Since not enough moviegoers went to see the film during its initial release to satisfy their curiosity, it got killed at the box office. But it became apparent that cats had nine lives. Fans clamored to re-watch the flop in public venues and at home just to show others how ridiculous the movie's look and plot were. Number 8. Bee Movie A story centered around a bee who uses his ability to speak English to soothe the human race over their use of honey sounds like the idea for an absurd sketch. But DreamWorks took this concept and expanded it into a full-length feature. Both critics and audiences were mixed about the bizarre premise, insect puns, and romantic tension between Barry the Bee and a human woman. What exactly is your uh, relationship to that woman? <gasps> In the years following the movie's debut, the internet universally agreed that the film was a great source of comedy. Number 7. Jack and Jill Adam Sandler starred alongside himself when he played both of the fraternal siblings in an infamous comedy. Before its wide release, critics warned that the film was full of obnoxious characters, tasteless gags, and pointless cameos. None of those red flags kept audiences away. During its run in theaters, Jack and Jill stayed in the top 10 of the domestic box office for five weeks and nearly doubled its budget. We can't tell for sure. But since Jack and Jill became the first film to sweep the Razzies, we're assuming people weren't going in expecting a great comedy. Number 6. Sharknado As advertised on the tin, the original film followed a ragtag group of survivors who tried to avoid being consumed by hurricanes of wind and teeth. Audiences ate up the cheap effects and corny dialogue. The performances were also celebrated for being perfectly campy. And after Sharknado broke viewership records for sci-fi, the channel quickly focused on green lighting follow-ups. A total of five sequels and three spin-offs have been released since the original film blew into town. Too many of them. We're gonna need a bigger chopper. Number five, Morbius. I have an overpowering urge to consume blood. Human blood. Outside of the questionable CGI and hammy villain, Jared Leto's Morbius was criticized for his flat delivery. Shortly after the film bombed at the box office, a widespread amount of internet memes and joke hashtags on Twitter kept the film in the pop culture conversation. Sony executives were so convinced that the popularity translated to good returns that they re-released Morbius in theaters, where it flopped for a second time. Number 4. Showgirls since this edgy erotic film carried an NC-17 rating, it had trouble bringing in enough people to fill theaters. It didn't help that those who saw the full picture didn't think it was very good. The steamy scenes were seen as over-the-top and exploitative. When combined with an inconsistent tone, baffling dialogue, and twist-filled story, viewers got a product that felt messy. Although the film had a rough financial start, it tripled its budget thanks to strong rental sales alone. Contemporary audiences and critics have also argued that Showgirls is actually a hidden masterpiece. Nomi's got heat. Does she now? Number 3. Troll 2 Despite not being a sequel to anything and featuring goblins, this movie was presented as a follow-up to a previous troll film. The film follows a boy who tries to save his family from being turned into plant food for goblins. Along the way, he has to avoid massive plot holes, cheesy effects, and infamously over-the-top performances. They're eating her! 
And then they're going to eat me. Oh my god! It was practically laughed out of the theaters back in the 90s. But just two decades later, audiences were seen embracing Troll 2 at screenings and fan events. Number two, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Why is it so important that you want to contact the governments of our Earth? Because of death. Because all you of Earth are idiots! In Ed Wood's sci-fi epic, aliens cause a zombie outbreak on Earth to stop humanity from wreaking havoc across the universe. This intriguing premise wasn't taken seriously due to the movie's spotty quality. The film was ridiculed for its cheap production design and its reliance on footage from other works. While its low quality and odd plot didn't grab audiences at first, Plan 9 continues to fascinate viewers today. Multiple documentaries, books, and even an Oscar-winning biopic all painted vivid pictures of how this film got made. Number 1. The Room Although it was billed as a drama about romance and betrayal, viewers thought it was a parody of both genres. The leads lacked chemistry, characters appeared and disappeared without explanation, and serious moments became laughable due to the bizarre performances. You betray me, you're not good, you, you're just a chicken. Chip, 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 chip. Director and star Tommy Wiseau's movie would have faded into obscurity if it wasn't for word of mouth. After news spread of how poorly made the room was, screenings for the film continuously sold out. Not only do showings continue to do well today, but the movie got a critically acclaimed biopic and will be remade. You're tearing me apart, Lisa! Why are you so hysterical? 